Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. Welcome to the All Hands On Deck Show. We are excited about this special, special uh, telecast tonight in the studio as we celebrate uh, the farewell of President Barack Obama. We have with us Reverend Gregory Seal Livingston, and we're so happy to have him. Uh, I bring you greetings from the GSJ Family Life Center, uh, where it's at 7, the phone number is 773-378-3300, and we're located at 1256 North Waller Avenue. Reverend Gregory Seal Livingston is a candidate mm -hmm. for Alderman here for the 4th Ward. Um, he has been a civil rights leader for a long time. He's been a pastor, uh, but he really got national notoriety last year after the uh, scandal of Laquan McDonald uh, made national headlines about the cover-up of his murder. And I remember the slogan was, President Obama, come get your boy. Talking about Rahm Emanuel. Yes, sir. Greg. Welcome to the All Hands on Deck show. We're here tonight to celebrate President Obama. Would you like to have an open opening comment? Well, it's always a pleasure to be here with the great <laughs> Reverend Doctor, Pastor, Civil Rights Leader Ira <laughs> J. Acri. And you know, we've been on each other a long time, and and we're friends, and we're able to share share laughter. But I gotta say, this man, whenever there was a call to help the people, he's always right there. And not just the public, but his own family has fought the good fight. Uh, for his niece and everybody else, and just tremendous. And, uh, you know, it's it's hard to find people who are going to stick their neck out in a machine city like Chicago sure. and in a country like America at times because everybody doesn't understand you, but this man is consistent. I'm glad to be here. You have a great audience. It's always a pleasure. You have so many followers, man, that I hope I pick up some of your people, too, you know, <laughs> on my Twitter feed, at G.S. Livingston. Listen, uh, this is a big day in Chicago, man. Yes, uh, the first black... President of the United States delivers his farewell message in Chicago. What were you the night he was elected, and how did you feel? Well, I was in Grand Park next to the stage, November fourth, two thousand and eight, and it was a spectacular night. Uh, you know, when you saw the Bidens come out, and then you saw, you know, you saw the Obamas come out, and it was an incredible time. I mean, it was, you know, for me at that point, his election wasn't political; sure. it was historical. And, and there's a big difference, especially being a black American, you know, born, you know, at a time yes. and, and connect to the struggle. Sure. Uh, it was it was hist it was more historical than political for me. Sure. It's a great day. Uh, what I have the callers thinking about is his legacy. Um, what is his greatest accomplishments? Uh, what does it mean to you? Callers, feel free to call in at 312-738-1060. Let me start out right away with you. Uh, what is his legacy and or what will be his legacy? Well, of course, we start off with him being the first African-American, the first black uh, United States president here in this country. And that's significant considering, and I have to give this to George W. Bush sure. uh, at the opening of the uh, Black uh, Historical Museum in Washington, when he said that the price of our great union is our or is America's original sin, yeah. and I, I was impressed when he said that. And he said, and it's so wonderful that we can walk into this museum and not have to pretend that you know whatever didn't happen and it did, because it made us all who we are right now as a country. So for him, can I just yes, pause you long enough? Yes, that, that President George W. Bush, his politics really stink, but the guy has a lot of character in certain ways, right? Yeah, he's the kind of guy that if you think he's wrong, he's like okay. If he thinks you're wrong or right, I think he acknowledges that. Uh, and he has his side of the uh, street that he's on. But, yeah, when he said that, I thought that was just, and for, you know, someone with his, come from that dynastic background. I mean, sure. so many presidents and everything in his family. That was huge. What do you think uh, would be President Barack Obama's legacy? Well, right now, it's Obamacare. Sure. It's the Affordable Care Act. But it seems like uh, there's going to be a dismantling of that on January 20th, but we'll see. Oh, boy. The Obamacare, Affordable Act, Care, Affordable Care Act, mm -hmm. um, it's been attacked by many, especially uh, the right-wingers. Um, but nevertheless, there's something good came out of that. And one-third of African Americans have health insurance. Yes, sir. So I think that's a good deal. Uh, we want to discuss... 
the eight years. Uh, what grade does the president deserve? How about that? Feel free to call in right now and give us the grade you would like to give President Obama, President Barack Hussein Obama. He's in Chicago today. He's in Chicago. We're going to miss them. Uh, him and that beautiful wife of his, yes, uh, Michelle, and those kids, Sasha and Malik. But we want to hear what you would grade him uh, on a scale of A, B, C, or D. That's what we like to hear. Let me ask you this. Yes, sir. What has happened to uh, race relations under his regime? I think that uh, they people, because we had a we had we have an, a black president, it was something that had to be spoken, that had to be said because there was this black man in the White House. So in, in that sense, I think that more people talked about it. Whether they were more comfortable talking about it, that's a whole other story. And uh, I think that from time to time, Barack mentioned it, and he was striving so hard, I think, at first to be the Jackie Robinson president. Mm -hmm. and then we so go, what do you mean by that, the Jackie Robinson president? Well, with Jack, Jackie Robinson, the legendary Major League Baseball player, the first black man in the Major Leagues, Branch Rickey, uh, told him, he says, look, you're going to have to be careful out there because these people will kill you. Mm -hmm. And so there's some things you're going to have to take, turn the other cheek, you know, and close your ears and not hear it. Same thing with Barack. His first day in office, you know, being inaugurated, one of the guys overseas called him a Kaffir, which is, you know, uh, Middle Eastern word for the N-word. Sure. First day. So uh, I personally think he got a little, little more... Afrocentric on the tail end of his presidency, would you agree? Yes, sir. Because I think things got a bit more racial on the on the back <laughs> right. of, in his country on the back end of his presidency. Sure. Yes, sir. Sure. Um, has race relations improved, or has it gotten worse under him? I think the cover may have been pulled off a little bit more, where we see some of this and we smell it more. The scent is stronger, <laughs> and uh, but uh, better. We're still fighting a lot here in Chicago. I, you know, if I looked at Chicago, I would say no. Sure. You know, beyond being straight up with you. You know, um, 312-738-1060, if you have a comment or question about the legacy of President Barack Obama, 44th President of the United States of America, the first African-American President of these yet-to-be United States. Mm -hmm. um, listen, what do you consider to be his greatest accomplishment? I think that, uh, again, Obamacare and the health of the citizenry, you know, because people that couldn't get insurance before because they had pre existing conditions, and even the Republicans recognize that's an awesome piece. They talk about even though they're going to dismantle Obamacare, they want to keep that aspect of it so people can be insured because if people feel better, they do better. You know, but I really think that's his great signature piece. Of course, Obama. Uh, I'm no Obama. Osama bin Laden who was captured under his watch. I think that's good. Yeah. Yeah. And so that he, he that's that, that'll always be there. George Bush didn't catch him, but uh, Barack Obama did. And uh, you know, I mean, so I, I know you have a long list of things yourself, but those two stand out for me. Well, well, what about um, the economy was totally jacked up when he was the pre when he mm -hmm. became the president. And he saved the banking industry, mm. you know. Yes. And I know that's controversial because some of those guys probably should have went to jail. Sure. But uh, nevertheless, he saved the banking industry. Um, and there are more jobs now under his watch than it was when he took office and took the oath of office. Yes, sir. You know, he wasn't responsible for the, the wreck he inherited when he came into office in 2008. And that was done under eight years of Republican uh, uh, leadership, the administration, and you know he came in with, and it was so, so much he had to contend with, and you know even I, I never forget uh, the State of the Union address when that guy uh, Gus, whatever his name was from South Carolina, mm -hmm. stood up and said, "Mr. President, you lie," yeah. and, and and it was just all the obstructionism that he had to deal with. But, you know, jobs did increase. All these things increased. Sure. Now, of course, the, the his haters would say, well, it was so far at the bottom, it couldn't go anywhere but up, you know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, but yet and still, it did go up. Absolutely. Um, the president, one of the things that many people here in Chicago really uh, don't like is his close relationship with uh, Mayor Ma Rahm Emanuel. Um, 
Do you have any comments about that? <laughs> I sure do, Dr. Ackery. <laughs> you know, he Brown was chief of staff for the Clintons, chief of staff for the Obamas, you know, those two administrations, and and he was disliked by Mrs. Clinton and by Mrs. Obama. And I have to be this straight up, you know, because Sun Times had a headline out, uh, cover page last week, heartless attack about, in Rahm's email, he was bragging about phasing out health care for city retirees, bragging about it. Talking about it is one thing, because sometimes we understand severe cuts are necessary and it's a hard job being a leader, but bragging about it is another thing. And uh, I think his relationship with Rahm is out of his own party loyalty. Sure. You know, the Democrats have to stick together to deal with the onslaught of the Republicans. But I think that, uh, uh, you know, that's one that he has to really sever because I can see nothing good coming out of that relationship. Rahm Emanuel um, is the mayor of our city, and we feel like he betrayed us. We had, we've given him the majority of his support. We, we've given him loyalty. But nevertheless, we keep, we keep getting played by his administration. Um, that's one of the things that I really resent about the president's leadership uh, is his relationship with Rahm Emanuel. Uh, he supported Rahm Emanuel twice, and I think that's why you came up with that slogan, come and get your boy, because the second time, even after he closed those 50 schools and, um, and, and did all of the disinvestment on the south side and west mm -hmm. side, uh, our president, as much as we love him, he came back and endorsed him and said, I came to support my boy. And I think that's where you coined the phrase, Mr. President, come and get your boy. Um, yes, sir. Well, even just, even on yesterday, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm still, I'm just at a loss of words. I'm at a loss of words uh, because the president gave this guy, Mayor Emanuel, $1.1 billion for Chicago, and wouldn't you know it, Rom takes this money and goes to the north side and gives them a gift, mm. a gift. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm almost losing my cool today. <laughs> but but uh, that bothers me. Uh, it's, to feel, it's to do some work with the CTA and the RTA on the north side, wherein the west side and the south side, uh, we have all of these... Uh, trains that need work and need to be repaired and they're they're putting a billion dollars worth of work out on the north side how can black elected officials sit back and allow this to happen no way in the world should Ron be able to get away f with that and no way in the world should we uh, let the president get out of the office without asking for something we have an ally in the White House. Things will be different in a few days. While you have an ally in the White House, get something. Forget saying he's the president of all of Americans and not just black Americans. But guess what? That may be true, but he is our president too. Yes. So why not get something for the South Side and the West Side? We keep on seeing uh, from this administration uh, uh, economic boom on the north side and downtown and disinvestment on the south and west side. What can we do? I know you're running for alderman, but let me ask you this. How can you change this climate? You only got one seat. Mm -hmm. I mean, how can one alderman make a difference? You only got one vote. Right. Talk to me. Well, I, I believe, Dr. Ackery, that the future of Chicago hangs in the balance on this fourth ward election because it is about independence and transparency versus the machine. It's about freedom versus slavery. That if an individual says it's time to change Chicago, where we don't have 48 to 0 votes in city council, no argument, no engagement with the community or anything like that. It, it is the beginning. It becomes the tip of the spear sure. saying that things can change because, you know, my, my major opponent is being funded by Ron Emanuel and Tony Preckwinkle. Why? Because they need somebody compliant in the office so they can continue to do what they want, continue to feed 
their cronies and the like. And we're talking about bringing the people to the table, sure. representing the people, being a voice. So if, if you don't want to be a slave, like Frederick Douglass said, you know, we're bringing this knowledge. Knowledge makes a man unfit to be a slave. All right. Yes, sir. We got Reverend Gregory Seal Livingston here. Uh, and we're also talking about the legacy of President Barack Obama. Greg is running for Fourth Ward Alderman here in the city. And um, he's also had some strong words about the mayor of this city. Uh, I guess you guys are not golfing buddies. No, but we can get into some, what they call that, MMA, mixed martial arts, <laughs> you know, or we can have a dance-off, you know, because he is a ballet, ballet, whatever a male ballerina is. You got that right. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, listen, um, <laughs> let me ask you a question. What is your biggest disappointment? What did you really expect from President Obama out of all the many great things that you just listed, and I threw a couple out there, what is your biggest disappointment with with his administration? Well, one is that I was really looking for a strong urban agenda to come out of the White House. He had been a community organizer, uh, and so he was out there in the streets working with the people, understanding the the some of the the raw essential needs of the people, sure. and an urban agenda that will help to fund that so that you know we could have a better quality of life. Number two, and some people may be surprised by this. I wish he had a stronger foreign policy uh, because I think, you know, with things like they talked about TPP, the Trans-Pacific Partnership and everything, I didn't see those things as being beneficial, you know, to the American citizen. And especially, let's be up and honest, the black American citizen. Okay. We need jobs. Sure. You know, and, and you talk about crime. Uh, jobs are one of the best things in the world to stop a bullet because all those people out there doing that, what we had, one person shot every two hours in Chicago last year. One person murdered every 11 hours in Chicago last year, and the figurative uh, counter was reset at the new year, but that's just figurative. It didn't mm -hmm. really reset. We, we're still marching towards that, and all those uh, shootings, those were attempted murders. So you, but you have a situation where people are, you know, in my, the ward I'm running in, mm -hmm. if you live... Just speak on that. Yes, sir. If you live east of Cottage Grove... You live, there's a, you live 20 years longer than if you live west of Cottage Grove. And it's not genetics, it's resources. Powerful. Yes, sir, because you got you could have a school three blocks apart, literally three blocks apart, and on, on one part east of Cottage Grove, a second grader can go to the washroom and use the toilet, have paper, get soap, and wash their hands. Three blocks west of that, different demographic, though, three blocks west, that second grader goes in there, guess what? There's no toilet tissue. There's no soap to wash their hands. And so you think that will impact the child's ability to learn? Yes. And that comes down to something called pro procurement. Why is it that these, this school is able to get all the supplies on time and they have an oversupply and this one doesn't? And that comes down to the buck. Look, it's not the job but the police department to supply jobs. Thank you very much, Reverend Livingston. We have a call. Listen, welcome to All Hands on Deck. We're celebrating President Barack Obama. Welcome to the show. Yes. Uh, thank you. I just wanted to make a comment about our president. Our president, as far as I am concerned, did a great job. He did the best that he could with the tools that he had. You failed to mention how Congress and the Senate said that they would block him from the very first day he got in office. And every time he tried to pass a bill, he was blocked, and you know that just like they would not allow him to nominate. He did nominate the, uh, that su Supreme Court justice, but they wouldn't even have a hearing on it. I am so tired of hearing about what he should have done for the black community. The black community, they need to get up off of their butts and all these churches band together. Rahm Emanuel would not have been able to close down 50 schools if our kids would get up and go to school. The aldermen in Chicago are responsible for a lot that has happened. They signed off on that money for Laquan McDonald and tried to keep it hush-hush. If we had known about it, Rahm Emanuel would not have gotten back in office. And you all need to get up off of President Barack Obama. It's almost like a lot of people are saying, would it have better, been better off if he had not 
uh, been a president, and all these black educators out here with these PhDs and and BS and all the rest of that, run for president and see what you could do. Walk a mile in that man's shoe. All right. That's what Much. I God bless you. All right, we got another caller. Welcome to the show. Caller, we can't hear you. Welcome to the show. Hello? Hello, welcome to the show. Yes, I'm calling just to say that I feel as Obama being... Hello? Keep speaking. Turn your television off and speak. We're running out of time. Uh, being the president, I don't feel that he did anything uh, significant for the blacks. Thank you very much. Thanks for calling. All right, she's trying to listen to herself on television. Yeah, yeah I got you. Can I ask something? Yeah. Go ahead. You know, one of the things, and I, and I understand what the first caller was talking about, but we did mention obstructionism. And obstructionism is a real term when you talk about politics where nobody's trying to negotiate or do anything like that. They're just out to stop you, period. And so, so yes, I, look, we both agree. They, they were obstructionists, just like we talked about the guy yelling out, you lie in, in uh, the State of the Union address. It was very disrespectful. No, nobody's denying that at all. And with these schools, Here's one of the things they said our schools didn't have enough children in them. But when you go to the best private schools, it's maybe 12 to 15 people right. or kids per class. That's an ideal situation. They want our schools to have 40 kids per class. The teacher can't handle that. And so, and again, don't fall for the okie doke because it wasn't just the black kids, but there were black people on the board who voted with them for these schools to close down. And, and again, we're talking about quality education. We're talking about a school. Okay, it's not overcrowded. That's a good thing. Also, let me just add, uh, it is the elected official. It's, it's the black elected official's responsibility to advocate and to get yes, resources sir. from the president. But when you speak out toward an African-American president, those guys were in a really rough position. People in the community would rise up and criticize him. Like, give the president a break. He's not the president of all of black America. He's the president of the United States of America. So those black elected officials in Congress, they, they were really walking a, a tight rope in dealing mm -hmm. with the president. We got another caller. Welcome to the show. Yes, hello? Yes, welcome to the show. We're celebrating President Obama, the first African-American president of the United States of America. How do you grade him and why? Okay, I think he's, he has been an outstanding black president. And I, I also commend that first speaker that uh, gave him all those uh, admiral points that she pointed out. I agree with her 100%. And the next comment that I would like to make in reference to L.A. L.A. passed a law there where it brought crime down tremendously. And the law is this. They have a law there that they passed that is called three strikes and you're out. And it's brought down crime there 30 to 40 percent. I'm, I'm speaking of murders, gunshots. And what that does is say a criminal has committed some two offenses that were serious. And when they commit that third one, they lock them up for 25 years. Now, those guys are in those cars riding around with those uh, drive-by shootings. That guy gets out of the car now because he tells the other guy, hey, if I get, get caught with you guys, I'm going to go to prison for 25 years. Thank you so much for calling. Listen, we got to wrap it up. It's been a great show. But I got one question. There's somebody listening. They're listening to this show tonight, Reverend Greg Livingston, and um, they see that the community is on a downward spiral, spiral, economically and educationally. What can they do? We need all hands on deck. What can people do to make Chicago a better place? Vote organize and step out there and let your elected official know what your needs are. And if you're in the fourth ward on February 28th, punch four for the fourth ward, GregoryLivingston.com. Thank you so much. Listen, I, I bring you greetings from the GSJ Family Life Center. I also pastor Greater St. John Bible Church on the northwest side. I'm also part of the Leaders Network of Chicago. We out here trying to make a difference, trying to level the educational and economic playing field. Thank you so much. It's been a joy. See you next week. Coming right back at you at 4.30 p.m. Thank you, Reverend Livingston. Thank you, Dr. Hacker. Always a pleasure. Thank All you. Right. Happy New Year, Doc. All right. God bless. Thank you.